Hi everyone and welcome to my updated guide for the Inner Mystic Ally Monk. Even despite the nerf, Inner Monk is gonna be the best solo XP farming build in the game in Season 26 for Greater Rifts and it's gonna be a very smooth experience from start to finish because it's also the Hadrix gift and you can get some of the most important items very easily by gambling on a level 1 character. So Monk is going to have the most insane start you can imagine in Season 26 and it has the best farming build. It doesn't have the best push build of Inna, that is actually a wave of light, but Inna comes extremely close with the Earth Ale variant. So in case you're already familiar with Inna's Monk, there was the fire build that we used to push with and there were also those water variations as you can see here right now that were used for lower end content and speed farming. And now fire has been nerfed, so fire is completely out. But for pushing, we have Earth Ally, which is almost the same in power level and plays pretty much exactly the same. And there is Water Ally for farming now. So even though the fire build was nerfed, which was like the best build, it turns out that water is still the best above all other classes. So this is how it's gonna be. Now the difference is not really large, it's just better by a tiny amount, not by an obscene amount anymore, but you can definitely count on Inna's being the smoothest farming experience next time around. In general, with a character like mine, 1500, 2k Paragon or so, all classes will end up speed farming somewhere in the range of Gia 110 to 115, but Monk simply has the advantage of being extremely fast. So you can do 90 second runs, you can do 100, 120 second runs uh, consistently and almost no other class will be able to do those tiers at this pace. So they can reach the same tiers but they might need like two and two and a half minutes or so. So this is why Monk wins out in the end. Now enough for the introduction, here is the setup. So I have the defeat panel linked in the description and here are also all the new variants. So I'm going to talk about the farming first because this is what most people will probably be doing for the most part and there's also the push setups. As I said, if you are familiar with the build, it hasn't really changed. Water is virtually unchanged and also the Earth Ally variant has exactly the same moving pieces that the Fire version had with, for example, the Orgel setup and the Tanky setup. So you'll be fine probably just mostly looking at the planet. Now for farming, there are some different variants. There's one like really speedy version, which is very similar to the T16 version that has Ingeom and Messerschmitt's Reaver. So you have way too much cooldown reduction to really benefit from this in terms of DPS, but it allows you to use dashing strike all the time. You can just dash, dash, dash and one shot and move on. So this is the idea of these super fast setups, similar to here. And then you have like the, the actual GR speed farming versions that go for a little bit slower pace. The inner set provides you with massive damage for Mystic Allies and you also get all the runes for Mystic Allies and for all the mantras and you get them passively at the same time. So there's lots of little nice stuff involved that also makes Inner's Monks quite good in groups because these just bring small little buffs that everyone enjoys. And Inner Monks are also going to be a very good Rift Garden killer next season around as well. So you might see them as a DPS in groups again with the Earth Ally variant. Now depending on the exact setup you will be moving around a few pieces but there are two items that you will always have in addition to the inner set which is the Bindings of the Lesser Gods which is a 200% damage bonus after hitting enemies with Cyclone Strike and the Crudus Boots which is again a 200% damage bonus unconditional and gives the Mystic Allies an extended duration. So the Water Allies essentially last forever and uh, pretty much similar for the Earth Allies that last very long and you don't have to press the button all that much. For speed farming you generally prefer to have Focus and Restraint and Squirt's Necklace and for pushing where you can't really keep up the Squirt's Necklace you typically go for a more like strategic playstyle with conventional elements. You have a 20 second rotation and you press your Mystic Allies when physical comes around for your Earth Allies and you have Endless Borg to give you more damage instead. This also means you're always going to have a few skills on your bar as well. So first of all, the Mystic Ally with the Chosen Rune. You will always have Dashing Strike, you will always have Cyclone Strike, and you will always have a Generator to activate your Focus and Restraint buff or just to refill your resources. And then you have two more slots which typically go to Serenity. And then you have one more which is usually Epiphany, especially for farming, because it's very useful. 
but this can also be replaced with a mantra or you can have uh, inner sanctuary which is actually used for pushing for example so that you can protect yourself from incoming damage you can also make your missing allies crowd control immune which can be helpful so this is another option that will fill the last slot for your stat priorities attack speed is usually a very good stat this multiplies the damage done by your mystic allies in their active forms so this is very potent and cooldown reduction is also very useful especially when you're pushing you need to reach a certain amount of cooldown reduction so that you can actually press your mystic ally often enough mystic ally has a 30 second cooldown and you want to use it every 20 seconds so you should be at at least somewhere around 35 to 38 percent cooldown reduction so that you can actually do this in pushing for farming it depends a little bit on the setup that you're doing usually you don't need that much cooldown reduction but it does help as well just to make things smoother mostly through dashing strike and serenity now in both cases farming or pushing you can run either a tanky or a squishy version so i'm gonna highlight this real quick and the squishy version is usually with orgles so you're gonna run two piece orgles and for this you're gonna drop two toughness items which are the favorite solidoki and the spirit guards so if you do the swap you're gonna lose roughly half or two thirds or so of your toughness but you gain something like three tiers or so of damage so this is a trade that you want to make when you feel more comfortable and also when your character is well geared and you understand how you can survive best with your cooldowns if you have very low paragon it can be really tough so i wouldn't recommend trying this before 1500 paragons or so when you're pushing for farming usually it's fine because stuff dies really quickly and you're usually quite safe but in pushing it can be pretty rough to play with orgles one other important difference in pushing is that you're gonna run shenlongs so you have to manage your resource a little bit to gain this massive damage buff which is way better than what the daibo can do so here you try to fill up your resources before your nuke phase which is physical for earth ally so that you get this 350 percent damage bonus it's not exactly very hard to do because when you press Mizigala, you get 200 spirit for free and your maximum is 250 if you don't have any other source of it so 80 percent of it will be filled instantly so you just have to make sure that you have a little bit of resources and then press mystic ally or it can also happen that you are already in shenlong window from just punching and then it will just fill up again from there so you have to be careful about not spamming cyclone strike too much in the wrong moment but this is almost about it when it comes to shenlong management and you can see this here in action so i'm at really low spirit and my physical cycle is coming up you just spend like a second or so punching the enemies and then you press mystic ally and this way you get instantly full resources and you proc the shenong it has this little icon on the debuff bar aside from this there are also some other little tricks that uh, i made a video about in season 25 when you were still playing the fire ally build but most of it still applies to pushing with earth ally anyway because the playstyle is essentially exactly the same you nuke on your convention rotation you have your defensive cooldowns up in the right moment so you usually want to juggle your inner sanctuary and your serenity in a way that they don't overlap too much so that you can stand still as much as possible for the endless walk buff and then have a big nuke unleashed on your physical cycle this setup is also pretty much exactly what you're gonna play when you do high grs in groups as a brief guardian killer your job will be to just chill during the run mostly and maybe finish off some elites in there and then you're going to be punching the rift guardian you're going to press your earth ally and this is about it the thing in groups is that the earth allies with their uh, boulders will actually knock up enemies all the time which makes it impossible for the support barbarian to group enemies together with ground stomp so you don't actually want to deal damage in the run until maybe almost everything has been cleared up and you can do like one damage rotation before the group moves on this is very important so if you are going to play this as an rgk you have to be careful with when you press your mystic allies and they're going to be active for a long time so you can really mess up your entire team with this if you are going to take the inner monk into the new anchoring nightmare there's also a setup in the defeat banner that you can see it is quite similar to how you would speed farm so you can just play a speed farming variant because the damage is usually more than enough especially from the pylons carrying you i already made a full guide on how to farm echo nightmare what you need to be aware of when to click the pylons so i'm not going to reiterate everything here 
but essentially you just blast the way to like wave 100, 110, 120 or so, depending on how far it goes very smoothly. And then you start clicking the pylons, the speed, the power, and then you finish off the conduit and try to end the encounter at wave 150. And it is fairly easy to do with an inner monk because you're mobile, you have serenity, you have the channeling that gives you almost permanent in invulnerability because of serenity. So it is actually fairly easy to do, even with all the stuff going on in there. If your damage is too low with the water ally, you can also just play the earth ally in there. So both works and it will probably be even easier. Inna is not exactly the best build for Echoing Nightmare. This is the Marauder Demon Hunter, but it works and it's actually one of the better ones anyway. And this also concludes the guide. So as I mentioned, all the links are in the description. There's also the written max roll guide that Nova has updated for us for season 26. So go check it out if you like and wish you good luck in season 26. Hope you like this video. For more guides, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.